we are in a unified field. There is one presence, one power, one life, and it is intelligent beyond any of our comprehensions. You and I cannot get our mind around this, nor are we meant to. We have a finite experience, and you're not going to get around infinite with a finite mind. Uh, but the intelligence is infinite, and it's an amazing thing. It works perfectly, intelligently, always in harmony with the vibration we're coming from. So when you lay your attention there, you begin to ignite the attractor fields. We're dealing in a universe that works perfectly and precisely by universal laws. Um, Raymond Hollowell defined it as ultimately the law of life. Uh, the, and then we understand that they operate, that as you get deeper in your understanding, there's you know, the law of attraction, you know, the law of momentum, the law. There's lots of different versions of how to relate to these invisible laws that govern. Here's the important part. They govern every single result we have or don't have. They, they govern it by our ability to work with them or work against them. It actually thwarts the very result consciously we're holding in mind. We might even be repeating it every single day, but our energy isn't a match. Wallace Wallace says, no one can rise to the greatest height in talent or soul development unless they have plenty of money. Whatever plenty means to you, your ability to give to causes that matter to you, your ability to help those you want to help, those, your ability to have a home that is one of your, of your, you feel so comfortable there that you're able to lean into the ideas of creativity and difference making you want to bring. For to unfold the soul and develop talent, we must, I'm going to make it us, we must have many things to use. We could not have these things unless we have money to buy them. Now, this is not the only thing, money, but don't exclude, oh, I don't really, I'm, I don't want to put my attention on money. You can do a lot of good things with money. So it, and it's an energy. It's the symbol of our own freedom. So if, if you have this thing you got trained in or inherited or a religious thing about uh, it's, it's holy to be in poverty, it's holy to not be self-centered. It's, it's <laughs> to be caring about more than just yourself. But the good, it, to really make the good that you can be and do important, money is an element in that in the physical world. There's nothing wrong, Wallace Waddle says, with wanting to get rich or be. I like the word be better than get. Be rich. The desire for riches is really the desire for a fuller, richer, more abundant life. And that desire comes from spirit. He calls it praiseworthy. It's spirit speaking to us, seeking an ever freer, fuller, expanded version of itself by means of itself. That means you. That's that longing. He says, everyone is governed by universal law, whether they know it or not. You know, I, there was a time in my life, in my 20s, I mean, I had it all by growing up. That My version was, I didn't even know I had this worldview, but my worldview was life is happening to me. And I was reactive to everything that came my way. And if something came my way that wasn't happy making to me based on my own programming, I would want, I would have to wait until that thing changed before I could be happy again or feel good. And so that was always a reactive based way of living. And then I began, I thank God, not, I got introduced that that is not to a way of relating to this thing called life. Life is not happening to me, it's happening with me. 